So what we want to do with this, okay, welcome to OK Movie Stream, our brand new site for independent films throughout Oklahoma, is we want to make stars. They're already stars, like <laughs> Barbie Bailey here. There's lots of them out here, and we've been fortunate enough to have them in our movies. We've been doing production here for, I don't know, I want to say how many, over 25 years, and uh so, and and I've met all kinds of talented people and and seen great even Grady Nichols. I first met Grady Nichols. He was a senior in high school. Oh my! And now and he and I was running a jazz station, and uh, that's how we met. And he wanted to get his music on the jazz station, and and to this day, you know, he's been just a name that everybody goes to see. And so we want to really bring the opportunity of featuring all of the folks here and today it's your time to be in the spotlight barbie thank you, you stevie doing? i'm doing well yeah so have you always like was acting something you always wanted to do as a child yes um the plan was to graduate from high school and go to new york to the american academy of dramatic arts oh, wow. my parents were ready to get me an apartment there and everything but I fell in love. Oh, no. Well, Barbie, no. Don't say a that. A teenager in love. <laughs> so that dream basically went to sleep until well after I retired. Oh, wow. So, so you fell in love. What were you, like 17, 18? I was just about 18. Yeah. And uh, yeah. was it love at first sight? Did did you share your A guy on the school him? bus. A guy what on the can school I say? Bus. He was a charmer. <laughs> <laughs> what what kind of pickup line did he use? Probably, what class do you have third hour or something <laughs> like that. My favorite pickup line of all time when I was in college was I saw this girl, absolutely gorgeous, and we were at a club, a dance club, and, and I saw her, probably 10 guys came up to her. And boom, she would just shoot him down. No, no, no. And, oh, you had to. And I had take to. I challenge. had to come up with something, you know. And so I went up to her and I said, uh, you know, this is my favorite song. And I thought I'd ask the most beautiful girl in the place to dance with me. And she looked at me, pulled out the gun from her holster to turn me down. And I said, she turned me down, but I was hoping you'd dance with me. Oh, priceless. <laughs> and she lo she had she a great sense it. of humor. She loved We dated her like a year, and then, you know, different things happened. How but, fun. Yeah. How fun. That was fun. So where'd you go to school? I went to school actually in St. Louis, Missouri, oh, to okay. uh, two different high schools, yeah. Brentwood High School and Hazelwood High School. And did you do acting in school? Were you in any place? I did, but my... Acting teacher kept telling me that I did this too much. <laughs> I remember there was a scene where I was talking about ants on uh -huh. a on a picnic blanket, and I said, "There are ants. What are we going to do with these ants? These ants." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I don't think I do that now, do I, Stevie? Not that I can remember. You know, mine was because uh, I grew up in Texas City, Texas. So I would say, fire, fire, oh, yeah. there's going to be a fire. You got to stop that fire. And I, I remember when I first wanted to get into broadcasting, I sat in the production room for hours going, fire, 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 fire. And it happened and it was like, oh man, I'm going to make it. I'm going to be somebody. But I never was. You still say stuff like that. <laughs> uh -huh. Thanks a lot. I have a fire story. Yeah. I was born here in Tulsa, mm -hmm. but my parents were from St. Louis, and I was in Camp Fire Girls and talking about the FAR. We were going to build a FAR, <laughs> and they would say, no, say fire, and I said, I did say FAR, <laughs> and my best friend to this day, since first grade, who lives in Michigan, always teases me, so I worry that maybe I say FAR still but it is fire and once you have it you've got it right yeah well you know fire it's, it's one of those things that <laughs> that stick with you because i had an english class in high school where we had to do a, a oral presentation yes you know from the whatever we read or whatever it was and i did one about the mafia and when i was talking about the mafia 
I kept talking and I would go through it and I would talk about events that happened in a particular city and I would say Chicago. And my buddies would all laugh at me, you know, and, and I'm trying to get all this like serious, you know, mm -hmm. stuff in there. And, uh, and I kept saying Chicago and they never let me forget that. And I think it's one of the reasons what made me want to, you know, be, uh, you know, someone that did voiceovers and things like that, because I wanted to l make sure that I made those corrections, but you heard those are part of our crew back here. They, they have a camera too. And uh, they're going to jump in and, and say goofy things about me every now and then because they're also my kids who... So it's your fault. Yeah, I know. It's my <laughs> fault. And as a comedian, it's hard because <laughs> they tell me all the time I'm not funny. I might make a room of 300 people laugh, but they'll first to tell me, no, dad, you're stupid. You well, know, they're so. too accustomed to you. They're <laughs> spoiled. I guess. <laughs> so you went... How, how, when did you get rid of that? Who knows? You don't know. Who knows? So, what did you do instead of instead of acting? Oh, wife? I decided I wanted to make money and get my oh, own gosh. apartment. Uh -huh. And at one point, um, after about twelve years, my younger brother told me one day, "You have a resume that's basically the who's who of major corporations." I set my sights as I was selling <clears throat> copy machines oh boy. that I wanted to work for IBM one day and uh -huh. sell computers because everything appeared to be going toward being computerized. Right, right. And it was early on. And after 10 years of attempting, I kept returning to interview at IBM. They hired me. Oh, wow. And um, then... I got married at age 40 and became a mom, and IBM had a big ah, downsizing, so I got out of the corporate world and went into real estate. Well, working for a big company like that, you have to, and selling, there's a lot of acting that goes on. Oh, that, yes, right? yes, yes. How did you feel those talents worked for you as a salesperson? Well, all my peers at work... And my competitors in other companies thought I was a total airhead <laughs> and really stupid. Uh -huh. But on sales calls and with the clients, they knew I knew what I was doing. <laughs> and I wanted to keep that secret. So I was very proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> when, when you would go on those sales calls, is there anything that you remember that was like, like an acting moment or a funniest moment from selling? Well, sometimes when you first meet the decision makers, they can be, you know, very intimidating. Right. And I would purposely try something to tease them about because I found every executive, no matter how high in the corporation, they just want to be treated like a real person, like anybody right. else in life. Yeah. And uh, I would be terrified, but I'd, you know, say something about, you know, why is your desk organized that way? You know, it wouldn't be rude. Right, right. But I would try to find some little way to get a joke in there. And um, that made it easier. But it was acting because I was terrified. <laughs> what was your big seller? What did you, do you remember? Oh, I sold a major mainframe computer to the biggest bank in St. Louis. And that oh, was a big deal. Wow. That's awesome. And they told my boss, I was a breath of fresh air, mm. whatever that meant. Well, you are. Absolutely. I need a drink. Even, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, that's not vodka by the way. So, uh, and just... I'm trying to cover it. So there's no product. placement. <laughs> you know, that's one of the things that we go through as performers. It's like I counted one time, I think I saw online that, um, I think the average person in their lifetime from the time they're 18 through their life might have 20 something jobs or something like that. It was, you know, I went back and counted mine and there were like 50 something, you know, from pizza wow. delivery person, oh, yes. window washer. I worked for one place where I would, I painted uh, when they used to paint billboards by hand, mm -hmm. and airbrush. I did that for oh, a little while. My. I wasn't any good at it. That's why I didn't do it for very long. But. Huh. 
And I'm afraid of heights, so that didn't help. Well, you were brave to take that job. <laughs> well, you painted them all inside the warehouse. And then oh, I always see people out. climbed up there, but they're the ones that are just placing it, Placing, correct? maybe okay. touching up and okay. stuff like that, washing off the bird. Then poop. I'm not as impressed now, Stevie. <laughs> <laughs> so I was having lunch the other day. We have a team of crack you know, investigators out finding out as much as they can about our guest. And uh, I was having lunch the other day oh with a friend of mine. And uh, he asked me, do you know Barbie Bailey? And I said, well, yeah, she's in a couple of our movies. And uh, and he's also in the movie. And then he said, business. why do you hire her? <laughs> no, he was telling me the story about you and I guess some of your other friends organized your like elementary school reunion or something. Yes. Bob Blair was who yes. was telling me about oh, you. Oh, Bobby. <laughs> He's Bobby to me. Now, I, people do like the high school reunions, but why elementary school? It just happened. Uh -huh. A friend's father died and another friend saw it in the Tulsa newspaper and contacted her. My best friend who's in Michigan, as a matter of fact, he contacted her. And at the time, he, he's a big developer in town named Ron Howell. As you say, Ron Howard, you I Ron got me all Howell. For a minute. No, sorry, Ron Howell, who owned Cross Timbers uh, Marina on Lake Skyatook. Okay. And he had this idea. He said, why don't we track down as many people from our sixth grade class as we can, and I'll treat all of you to a weekend at Cross Timbers. We'll go out on the boats and all this. I think since he had been the boy of the year in sixth grade, uh -huh. and my best friend Carol had been the girl of the year, it kind of gave him the idea, well, let's get everybody back together. And oddly enough, through various sources like Bobby and a few others, we were able to track down 75 people. We got about 22 people to come. Um, our grade school was Franklin Elementary, which is now the street school uh -huh. at Yale and 11th. Oh, okay. We were able to have a dinner in the in the gym, and we dedicated it to our PE instructor, Mr. Kerwin, who was still alive. He was oh, 83 wow. at the time. We dedicated the gym to him, ate so dinner. So he was teaching while you were there, so uh, that, so he was probably, he's 85 at the time? He was 83. 83. So it was then... his first job. He wanted to work at a high school, and they told him, all we have available is an elementary school. And he told us all. My first thought was, oh, I can't stand little kids. I don't want to go work with little kids. <laughs> so I was going to say he was probably like 60, because that was just like maybe 15, 20 years ago. Right, you know? exactly. Okay. Yes, yes. want to coach I just kids. got my GED last <laughs> week. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead i'm sorry so Dan. we all gathered and we decided to meet the weekend between mother's day and memorial day every may uh -huh. because there wasn't a lot of traffic on the lake yet not a lot of cabins rented and for boy for like six years we met up every year wow um in the last three years since covid one by one they're starting to die oh yeah that's uh I see it's, that too myself. It's, it's sad. sad. Yeah. 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 Um, so it, what was amazing about it all is when we all got together, I mean, there were, there were captains of industry. There were uh, principals, teachers, uh, entertainers, but everybody without exception turned into their 10 year old self during the weekend. It, it was amazing. All the guys would remember baseball plays and, and who did the most push-ups for the president's physical fitness program. <laughs> it was just so freeing because when you're that little, your core personality is who you really are deep yeah, down that for the rest sense. of your life. That makes sense because I think by the time you're high school grad and your high school friends, a lot of those people you might continue with you know, through life, but maybe not many of them were in your elementary school class. Exactly. And, and, you know, and like you said, like a lot of people I hear and I'm victim of it too, is that, uh, I, 
I don't necessarily go to my high school reunion because I see all those people that I hang out with or I have conversations with them still to some extent. But I don't, my sixth grade friends, I don't, you know, and, uh, and where, you know, you learn so much and you have, you haven't learned how to judge people necessarily yet. And, and so you don't, so you, you have a different kinship with those people, I think, than what you would with your senior class. And Yes, nobody was trying to impress anyone then. Did, you accepted uh, everyone for who they were. Did any of those people become what you might have thought they had the skill set for, you know, later in life? Or were you surprised by anyone that became or did something? I think just about every person excelled to the level you would expect or did not. <laughs> you guys got something. I will I not name names. I will not name names. You thinking about something? You uh, have something over there? Uh, no. Uh, we were just kind of saying that uh, we need <laughs> like a button <laughs> to just like make some noise or whatever. That's all. Oh, like uh, no, wah, sound effects. Wah. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and then what I was told, it's a rumor. You met someone special there. Yes. My husband. <laughs> I mean, when we were in grade school, I don't think we ever even talked. Really? He was a big baseball player, and, and uh, my best friend's older brother referred to him as that little twerp. <laughs> and uh, we don't remember even saying hello. It, it's just odd. And um, he grew up to be a CIO for big oil companies. Mm -hmm. And I always thought in reading circle in first grade that he wasn't as bright as I was. <laughs> and he says that's true. But um, during the reunion, we didn't really interact for the first three years. Uh -huh. And the third year, we started communicating um, we'd both been through divorces, and uh, I wasn't interested, but I suddenly realized he's really interesting. He's really cool. And he introduced me to punk rock. Wow. And there's been no going back. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw that, you know, on your Facebook, you talk about that your, your evenings, you guys like to sit out on the yes. deck and... And you go through those selections of music, including punk rock, I guess. We change it up every day. We try something different. And sometimes we can only listen to the first few bars. <laughs> but I, I tricked him the other night. I said, I'm going to play some music I think you'll really like. And I found that one Spotify station, Kids Rock, I think. It's children. Oh, yeah. Children's songs that are, but it sounds like rock. And so the first song came on, and he's like tapping his feet and everything in the kitchen. And the, the lyrics were something like, I like my dog. I'm going to pet my dog and take it to... And he looks at me. <laughs> and it sounded so much like Green Day. Oh, really? It did. What Frighteningly did... so. <laughs> so when you talk about punk rock, what do, you, what, do you, what do you guys listen to? Who do you listen to? Green Day, Out. What is it? Not Outcast. Um, oh, shoot. Now the names aren't coming to me. Green Day's the big one. We uh -huh. have our whole media room is all posters and memorabilia of Green Day. I'm really having trouble remembering the other one. That's but I, okay. You know, I think about punk rockers and I think, you know, like wearing like bracelets with little spiky oh, thing the and, guy liner yeah the goth the, look yes. that's not really the same thing right it is it is yeah. it is Do you guys go out that way anywhere no <laughs> no well once on halloween we did <laughs> yeah he went as the the front man for green day and i went in my favorite costume which i now have been told is uh, appropriation of another culture, so I can't do it anymore. But oh, okay. I made a great Tina Turner at the time. Yeah, yeah. When yeah. you were younger and thought about acting as a career, who did you who did you see as the actress that you wanted to be like? Anne Margaret. Really? Oh, 
I thought she was amazing. <laughs> and Kim Novak. This is dating me, isn't it? <laughs> no, no, not at all. Not at all. I almost had a chance to meet Anne Margaret. Oh, really? Yeah, she was playing. Um, she did an event at. She was she was in Branson for a while, and she was doing. Uh, she was with what is the guy who used to sing White Christmas or Bing Crosby? No, not no. Bing Crosby. Uh, um, maybe it wasn't White Christmas. It was. Uh, now I forget, but anyway, she was there performing with him. I think it was in, in uh, and I told my buddy because we were supposed to get to interview her for a show we were doing, and I said I'm going to hit on her. And this was before I got married, and and he said, man, she's like seventy something. I go, yeah, but she dated Elvis, you know. So like, who cares? And danced with him too. But I didn't get to because she, it she took, it was going to take her too long for makeup and getting ready for the show and. We were interviewing them before the show, and so it was it was a bummer. And so, if those were what were your favorite, what was your favorite movie? At what point? I've got gurgles. Can you hear it? Yeah, gurgles. Okay. In I'll my get throat. them out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite movie when of all time? Well, let's start there. My favorite of all time, Harold and Maude. Really. Why? It was just such a surprise when I saw it. Mm -hmm. And the way a young, young person that doesn't really want life and a very elderly person who wants every drop of life they can grab mm -hmm. come together and basically heal each other in a way. Yeah. And, um, and it's hilarious. But... Um, the first scene made me want to almost get up and walk out because I really believed he was doing what it looked like he was about to do. And I don't want to say it because I don't want to spoil it for anybody because it's a must-see. You have to watch Harold and Maude. <laughs> and, uh, okay, so then what's another favorite? Let's say... Oh, goodness. Favorite drama. Favorite drama. Uh, I'd love to sound brilliant and intelligent and say Citizen Kane, but I really don't care for Citizen Kane. Um, you don't have to sound, we all know I, you're intelligent, but just, <laughs> but we, we, Thank you. we love the fun side probably a little more. So what's, yeah, what are you I, watching these dramas? Side? I can't think of a favorite drama, but there's been so many comedies. I've just loved movies mm -hmm. from, well, my first pick, one I ever saw a of in a theater yeah. was um, Fantasia, uh -huh. and what what a way to have an intro into the cinema! <laughs> and you do great. We love we love you in our comedies. You've been in uh, three of our movies, three of our movies now, right? And mm -hmm. so uh, WWJR was more of a serious role for you, and that's what we love about you is the fact that you know you can do that. But then when I ask you to do comedy, you like – I work with some actors who, who don't want to, you know, break their ceiling of comfort. But you are like, what? Whatever, you know. Oh, I love your comedies and getting an, a chance to be funny In Heaven's Date when you played Chef Mama. That was my favorite so far. <laughs> We're all family. We're just trying to help my baby, little Eric, impress his girlfriend on a first date. Little Eric? Chef, Mama, are, are, are you telling me that- Yes! Yes, Eric is a mama's boy. Good grief, we've got to put an end to this right now. I really liked her. Yeah, she was, <laughs> what, what, did, what drew, what did you draw from to become Chef Mama? Weird great aunts. Oh, yeah? Yes. Yeah. You had a few of those? A couple. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, that's like very specific. <laughs> yeah. Well, I find a lot of times what... Okay. Creating a character to me is... It's like I get up on a diving board, ready to dive into the character. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I do, even though it's not any of the techniques I've learned or practice is I almost always can find someone I can channel from my life 
that was either very much that person right. or my scene partner was very much that person. And that's kind of my jumping uh, off point. Yeah, that's kind of an interesting perspective to look at whoever your your scene partner is and play off of them how you would someone in your life. You know, mm-hmm. Never really thought mm-hmm. of it that way so much as just trying to emulate somebody or a couple of different characters and combine them into one element that makes a character. But that was that was pretty interesting way you put that. And I like that. What do you like now about, <clears throat> you know, in the business, we see a lot more, uh, especially here, you know, and, and I think it's probably so like when I worked in Dallas and I'd have to go to auditions, I might have to travel 20 miles, you know, all the way across town mm-hmm. to go to an audition and then have to go to another one, 10 miles in another direction. And, and, but live versus <laughs> recorded and sending those in. I prefer recording and sending sending them in. Yeah. I uh, I'm very uncomfortable in in person auditions. I'm not sure why. When you sure started why. this, you said you were nervous. Yes, I, I just it's a different experience, and yet I can do much better sometimes in in person, but it doesn't feel good. Yeah. Um, I think I like the creative aspect of filming an audition and sending it in. Gotcha. The setting up the equipment, choosing the wardrobe and, you know, editing. Editing is so fun. Mm-hmm. Isn't it? Isn't it fun? Uh... <laughs> editing is the most <laughs> is. fun. <laughs> the thing I think I love about your auditions, that others don't put themselves in. A lot of people, an audition, they just kind of like, you know, whatever their day clothes they're wearing, you know, and they and they act through their recorded audition. And even sometimes when they come in for a live audition, but you like go the extra mile. And oh. as you said, I mean, I, I see you sometimes on Facebook just putting up new uh, new wardrobe that you got for whatever reason, maybe just to keep in your arsenal, but you uh, always have something different. The last audition you sent us, you had oh. three different reads and three there were different four outfits. Characters, oh, four characters. Oh, four characters. There, there oh, were yeah. four. Right, yeah. <laughs> Hello there, Levi Keaton. How's your day going? I wish we would have met up a month ago. I really could have used your help on a speech like that we used in another project. So, um, let's see. Have you... Have you won any awards? These ortho videos aren't really showing me how you would build suspense with respect to story structure. And that oh, was a lot of fun. That, I told Gary, my husband, that's the most fun audition I ever did, ever. Really? And you said you almost missed. I did. Seeing that there were three extras. Right, yeah. I did. I, w- I watched like maybe like the first one and then I watched it again. And as I watched it, I let it run longer. And then, oh, there's another one here. Oh, and then God. another one and another one. And, we, you know, we, we got a, a good chuckle out of all of those. But they were good. They were a lot of fun. I guess I enjoy as a director. I like having live auditions because I like to give the actor a chance to try to interpret what I try to ask them to do. Yes. Because, like, like on set. Right. Because so many auditions that I went to when I was younger, they would say, okay, uh, we'll do your slate and read your thing and you do it. And, and then, okay, that was good. Thanks. You, and you, you'd leave the room and not have any idea. And sometimes it's hard. I know a live audition is hard because then, uh, director producer casting director are all sitting there behind a table and and they're like oh that was that was really good that was good that was great you know we, we did it again you know and, and then you're like oh yeah yeah you know you're thinking <laughs> you get the part and and you do something else and then uh yeah yeah good 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 yeah well we, you know, then you never hear you never know and well that's the they, best they give those notes to whoever they think looks the best for the part yeah right, probably right. <laughs> Probably. And it's, you know, it's, that's the hard, that is the business and it's the heartbreak of it. And one of the reasons why we wanted to do this show, because we want to 
uh, give people a chance to get to know you and get to know what you're working on? What have you been doing other than our stuff that uh, you've had fun with? I don't know if I'm supposed to say names or, or what, but oh, there's a TV, we're, we're a TV trying to promote series. Everybody. I, I, I mean, that's up to them. I don't know if they will let you say anything. See, but. I don't want to get in trouble. Yeah. Because right now you can really get in a lot of trouble. Um, I've been working on a TV show and I actually had eye surgery in July. So I'm just now able to be working again. Yeah, I get you. Um, but prior to that, through the year, there have been a, a lot of interesting things. Um, a couple friends are doing their first films, and we're going to be filming those later this fall. I don't know if you know Chuck Price, and I think you might know Jack Dexter. Mm -hmm. They're doing some projects. Um, and Christina, my agent, submits me for everything yeah she's great i everybody, love I everybody can, we have so oh, we love her you know she's so awesome she because she finds stuff for you and looks you know really looks hard yeah and even when i find something on my own which i often do i will definitely pay christina because she works harder than any person any person i know yeah too hard yeah i worry about you christina <laughs> um, she has Four kids, right? Four, I five, think four, yeah. yes. At last count. <laughs> so uh, for you, um, have any pets? I have two large, beautiful, loving Maine Coon cats. <laughs> Why cats for you? Not dogs or or lizards? or I, I like the aloofness of cats. Uh -huh. Dogs... I hate to say this because everybody loves dogs, but they're so needy. <laughs> and I don't want to be constantly told I'm adored and licked. And, you know, come to me when you're in the mood to snuggle and then you'll get up and leave. That's how cats are. Uh -huh. And um, I've just always loved cats, probably because my mom would not allow me to have cats. Mm. And she would always get a dog and they were always her dog and never liked me and... You know, childhood just damages so many of us, Stevie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can ask my kids. They had it rough. I can tell they're damaged. <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, uh, yeah, my dad, he wouldn't let us have any animals in the house. So oh. only once did we have a cat and he was never around to play with because he was, you know, a street cat basically. Oh, and yeah. Came and went when he was hungry or thirsty and, and, uh, but he wouldn't play. No. <laughs> and I think, I think you know, we had a cat when we were like five. So consequently, I'm not a big cat person. I, you know, my wife's cat is mean to me. And uh, he's nice to everybody else, but he's mean to me. He'll stick his hiney in my face and, you know. Well, that that is actually showing respect or saying hello. Yeah, he throws up on my favorite he loves you, stuff. Stevie. Yeah, I could tell. That's that's yes, the kind of love I need. He's marking the territory. <laughs> he wants you for his own. <laughs> uh, kids. You got any kids? I have a wonderful son who just turned 30 years old. Oh, congratulations. And, uh, to uh, him and to you. Oh, and he's just, and he just got his first professional job. He's in coding and software oh, wow. and all that. Yeah. And his first job is actually working for my husband. Oh, wow. He's doing designing something called a dashboard uh -huh. for the oil company Gary works for. And um, so it's, it's exciting to see him going out into his own life and making his own path. And So how does your family respond to your acting now? My original hope was that it would make my son finally think I was maybe a little cool. Uh -huh. It worked. <laughs> it worked. He doesn't think I'm really cool. He'll say <laughs> things like, well, what he said, which you'll be unhappy to hear, is that he likes how I can play cold and cruel so well. Oh, boy. Uh -huh. I'll, have to, I'll have to figure out a place to put you in that role. <laughs> no. <laughs> 
but those can be fun too, you know. Oh, yes. What did you play that you were cold and cruel? That can you say or it or, was yes, it's it's come out. It was a an independent film called Gutter Press. It was filmed in Wichita mm -hmm. by some people up there. I just found the casting call online and put in for it and it turned out to be a very large supporting role and I was actually kind of a villain. Wow. My Can you give us a little bit of that villain? Mm hmm Oh, no, no, <laughs> no. My villain, no, the meanest thing I did is my son, one of my sons, well, he thought he was my son, told me that he'd become a librarian when I retired so he could be like me and have the same career and he hoped that I would accept him. And I look at him and I say, and yet you keep trying. And I just walked out on him. Ooh. But his older brother, I was protecting in my barn where he took abducted young ladies and hid them in the basement. Oh, wow. And I brought them library books. That was kind of you. Twisted. In a twisted kind of way, yeah. <laughs> That's sick, Barbie. <laughs> it was terrible. So. But but I just, I don't know. It was fun watching it on a screen. and. But didn't you like the way she described it? Like, I, for a minute, I thought she was, like, talking, like, something she did in real life, you know? Like, mm -hmm. I no. did this and I did that and I... <laughs> Instead of my character, she said, I did. And well, we I did. became Henrietta Gray. That was her name. Yeah. Nice. Cool. And you said that's out. We could find it somewhere. Well, it's an indie, yeah. so it's not really out. I mean, it was at a film festival on a screen in Kansas City, and they're still buried in post. You know how that is. Right. It lasts forever and a day. You really turn around movies quickly. Well, comparatively, and yeah. and they're done well. Thanks. We I interviewed on my wife and I have a podcast too, and and we uh, were talking to uh, a guy who had made this movie about kind of involved a grandparent, and that's what our podcast is about: being grandparents. And uh, he was, I asked him, you know, how long did it take you to put the movie together? You know, and he said, well, like three years to write it and. To, cast it and to, you know do this and that and and he said how long did it take you and i said well we try to write them in like six weeks to eight weeks and we shoot them in within 30 days or so and then we and then we post-production is the longest usually four to five months and uh and he said, man, that seems awfully fast. Well, it's still a job. You know, it's it's like if I want to keep doing it all the time, it's a job and mm -hmm. I have to make it happen like so many of the other big guys, you know. I mean, they're, they're cranking out. Adam Sandler now making movies yes. left and right. Yes. And, uh, you know, all, all of those those guys who have their own production companies, they're doing that. And, and it's fun. It's fun. I, I don't know how many nights... My wife calls and says, you know, it's 8 o'clock. Oh, uh, oh, bless her heart. Which means I need to come home. Well, that know? gives her more time to make beautiful jewelry. Yeah, she does do that pretty good. So uh, she makes earrings, so you'll we'll, we'll have those for you to get to. And So what we're working on, because you've done a number of big projects too, and independence, what do you like about each and, and what's kind of the favorite things about them? Each, yeah. What's what do you like about working on a big project? What do you like oh, on an independent okay. versus different? I think on independent, everybody seems happier. More, it always feels more like a family. In some cases, it it really is largely family. Right. Um, on the big ones, I love how well they handle all the costumes and the makeup, and it, it's like all the all the periphery things that 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 make everybody look right is just so cool. <laughs> I'm impressed by their crafty uh, craft services. Yeah, all that. Yeah. Um, and um, seeing stars. I mean, getting to stand next to Dennis Quaid uh -huh. in a scene. Right. 
was just breathtaking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it It's pretty um, awe-inspiring, I guess. Uh, but it also can, for me, I was the, the only the biggest things I were, I was in JFK with, you know, Kevin Costner. Yes. And those guys. And we shot one scene for two weeks. It was the downtown scene with the, you know, where the president's going through the thing. Yes. And so, uh, and that was so elaborate because there was all that, everybody was in, you know, period piece uh, clothing yeah. so, and they were just all in this big, this big, huge hall where they had them all lined up and your number was on them and you had to remember your number. And as you went in every day for two weeks to put that on and, and, um, another one was with treat Williams Oh, uh, and um, it was it was a TNT movie called The Final Verdict, and um, but we had to be on the set like at five in the morning, as it was something that was supposed to be based in the twenties, and so again, period costuming, and uh, and you're standing there in it for four or five hours waiting for mm -hmm. them to be ready to shoot, and so those are kind of the they're exciting, but also it's kind of you know, not as much fun all the time to just sit and wait. And uh... Well, that's what acting is largely. A lot of times people say, well, acting is auditioning. No, acting is waiting. Yeah. <laughs> waiting. Whether you're working to get a job or you're on the job, it's all waiting. And I told my son once when he was little, the worst thing in life, honey, is waiting. And then I get into acting. <laughs> <laughs> So what do you want everybody to know about Barbie? That I'm having the time of my life and I'd love for you all to watch me be different people. Um, I'm just, and also I didn't get into it till at quite an advanced age. And one big message there is you're never too old to become who you can be. Or to pursue a dream. So. Or to do it extremely well, as you do. Well, so. thank you. You got the check? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, good. So look for Barbie on our movies. I know WWJR, which is like Voodoo, and and then you can also find it on our website, you know, okmoviestream.com, as well as uh, The Prayer List, and uh, that's on Amazon and our, our website. And then you... Uh, will be coming out in our newest movie, currently called uh, The uh, Holy Flicks. Well, you say that because we're thinking about changing the name to oh. Ghost Uncle, the, but we're the working title is yeah, Holy Flicks. Holy Flicks, and so it's uh, so it's a lot of fun. And oh yeah, I don't, I can't forget to uh, all of our guests, obviously. Oh we'll boy, our uh, OK Movie Stream T-shirt. Oh, I love that. And, uh, you know, and so thank you so much for being a part thank of you. us and be looking for her. And we'll have more of our guests here on OK Movie Stream. And thanks so much for joining us. It was an honor to be here. Thank you, Stevie. And thank you, Stevie's kids. <laughs> Bye, everybody.